What is going on everybody? Today we are going to be doing ABS on the Mustang. Uh, first, if you like this video or like this kind of content, consider subscribing. I got other build videos and autocross videos with uh, the Mustang, so check those out. All right, the ABS. So as I've said in previous videos, the car was a base model and did not have ABS. It just has the regular proportional valve on it. I want to put ABS on the car. I think it'll be better. That's my opinion. Uh, a lot of people delete the ABS because they want the, the manual brake feel. I want to not worry about the wheels locking up. I want to hit the brake hard and not worry about locking up any of the wheels. Right now, I'm constantly locking up the right front whenever heavy on the brakes and there are probably some other things that I can try to do may work with the balance of the car but this is an option that I've been wanting to do I think it will help the car greatly so adding ABS to these cars and pretty much any cars is actually pretty easy uh, these ABS modules which are off of the S95 New Edge Mustangs are pretty standalone. So you can get these and just wire up to power and they'll work. They don't need any CAN communication or any other communication with the PLC or things like that to actually work. So you can wire them up to the ECU if you want to get like traction control if your ECU actually does traction control. Uh, I'm not gonna worry about that at the moment. So the ABS modules that are currently out there uh, the early cars, which were maybe the 94s to 97 or something, don't quote me on the years, um, were three channels. So that means that they had one for each front and then one for the rear. The rear just split off and it did, it, did both off of one of them. Uh, the later ones were a four channel, which means you got a brake for each wheel. Uh, so that is the more desirable one for me. Um, it does mean that I have to run an additional brake line to the rear, as right now there's only one going to the rear. Uh, but how I'm going to be mounting this, I'm going to have to run all new brake lines anyways. So for me, I thought the four channel was the more desirable option. So this one is out of a Cobra. I think a 99 Cobra. It says Cobra right on the sticker. I do have another one. This one I actually got before I found a uh, Cobra in the junkyard. Got really lucky on that. Uh, but this one says GT traction. So this is out of a GT car and this one has traction control. Not sure if this one has traction control too. It might not. Uh, but this one actually says GT traction. Which one is going to be better in the car? I don't quite know. Um, I have Cobra brakes on the car, so I'm thinking about putting the Cobra one in there uh, first to try out and see if everything feels good with that. These these two modules probably have uh, different, we'll say, parameters on there that work better with certain brake combinations. So the GT one probably works better with the smaller GT brakes. The Cobra one works better with the larger Cobra brakes. Uh, there's also an option out there to get the newer um, GT 500, which is also a standalone uh, ABS module. And those work even better with the bigger brakes that people are running. But for me, I think this Cobra one will work out great. So this is the one that I am gonna mount up in the car. Uh, wiring is pretty simple. Um, so I tried to grab everything that I could out of the car. Uh, I even removed it from the fuse boxes. So I still have the fuse box terminals on there. So it should be mostly plug and play. Um, but there is some differences that I will have to do since this came out of a much newer car than mine. Mine being a 94. This came out of... A, I think I came, it came out of with this Cobra one, so this one came out of maybe a 99. The wiring is pretty simple. You can find instructions, diagrams, all that stuff online. Basically, we got powers. These big wires need to go to uh, 
a fuse. It's a pretty sizable fuse. I think it's the, the larger 40 amp fuse that needs to go onto there. There's brake pedal and wheel speeds and indicator lights and things like that. Um, but overall, it's not going to be too difficult to do all the wiring. All right. So mounting this guy. So I still have the bracket on it. So these are found in the passenger side front frame rail down low underneath like the air box is where these are mounted in the factory location. So I could do the factory location. Uh, as I said, the car didn't have any of that. So I'd have to run all new brake lines and wiring anyways. So it's not a total plug and play solution, but I could get like the brake lines from a car or something like that to make it a little bit easier. Um, but the con of that is this is about 10 pounds and it's mounted in front of the front wheel axle. So that's weight forward of the front wheels, which is what you do not want. Um, so I'm thinking about mounting this actually underneath the dash inside the cab because there's a lot of room there without having the heater core or any other things in there. It's a lot of empty space and honestly wasted space if I'm not actually putting anything there. It's just open space. So I think I'm going to mount this underneath the dash inside the car and run all new brake lines and run the wiring from there. I think it'll make it a little bit easier for some of the wiring and some of the, the brake lines because then the rear ones, I think I'll probably run brand new ones underneath the carpet and then out uh, to the rear axle. The front ones I can then pop back through the firewall and make it nice and easy. The ones from the master cylinder, I don't need to run from the master cylinder all the way to the front corner. I can just run along the back of the firewall, inside the car, hit it, nice easy, nice short. Um, another thing, since the car doesn't have ABS, it means that it doesn't have any of the ABS sensors or rings on the car. Um, so I grabbed the sensors that I could from the junkyard cars. I might go grab a few other ones just to make sure I have spares that work. Uh, you can buy these new, but they're kind of pricey. So I'm going to grab them from the junkyard because they are cheap and you can get multiples and see if they work. Uh, for the front wheels, for the toner ring that goes on there, any hub that you buy will have the toner ring on there. So my hubs must still be factory because they don't have the toner ring on there. So they need to be replaced anyways. Who knows how many miles are on there. I know they have, you know, like 10 years of autocross almost on them. So they need to be replaced. So I got some brand new ones coming that will have the toner rings on there. You can slap those on. That's good to go. On the rear, um, my axle is actually from a later Cobra that I put in there. So it's a Cobra 8.8 .8 in there. So it actually has the toner rings already on it, which that will make it nice and easy to install the sensors. Everything's already there. But if you don't have the toner rings, you can buy those. Rock Auto has those and they are super easy to put on. You just, whenever you take out the axle, the axle shaft, you can just press on the, the toner ring onto the axle housing. Actually, I had removed those from that axle at one point because I'm not using those, so let's remove those. And now I've decided that I want to put uh, ABS on the car. I actually put them back onto the car, onto the axle uh, one time when I had to, had to pull the shafts out to do the longer wheel studs. So. That is all good to go. So we'll get the sensors all installed. We'll get the new front hubs installed. We'll figure out how to mount this guy underneath the dash. So right now I don't really know how long this video is actually gonna go. So I might break this install up into multiple videos. So I cut off early. There might be another video. I'm trying to keep the videos 
not going too long. 10 to 15 minutes is kind of my goal. Um, so we'll try to meet that. So let me get this guy installed and I'll meet back up with you guys in a second. 